and introduce to you Jonathan Cordero. Uh, Jonathan is head of corporate business development of a great company. It's called the Eurasian Resources Group, ERG. That is a, a natural resource conglomerate operating in Europe, in Kazakhstan, in Russia, Brazil, Sub-Saharan Africa, Congo, South Africa, 19 billion in assets, 7 billion uh, revenues, uh, 85,000 employees, so it's a huge company. And uh, well, if we talk about diversification of raw materials, the ERG is one of the first addresses to turn to because they are all over the world and not only concentrated in a few countries. So Jonathan, the floor is yours. Great to have you here. Thank you, Friedbert. It's an honor to be here with all of you and talking about a topic that is not only very close to my heart, but also at the core of everything we do at ERG. Um, COP27 is a testament of our endeavors reinforcing the intent of our society to decarbonize, to make the world a better planet for the ones that come after us. And uh, every week we can hear about new commitments, both from the private as well as from the public sector, uh, to net zero. Um, some of which we heard very ambitious goals, um, the transition towards electric vehicles. Let's appreciate where we have come as a society. I think we can be proud of ourselves um, and how united we as a society are in the move towards uh, decarbonizing. The harsh reality, however, is that the metals required to make this transition happening are coming from an industry that historically has suffered from a very bad reputation due to social and environmental issues. And the even bigger problem is that the commodities needed, as we just heard, and we got a very good wrap up of what is needed in the numbers, simply do not exist. Let me be more precise. They do not exist. The metals itself exist, subsurface, untapped, undiscovered, underdeveloped. We need, to, we need to quickly expand the production, and that's where we're going to struggle uh, most in our industry, to hit the net zero global emission goals by 2050, and we have some about 2030 already, or 2035. We will need to produce, on average, six times more material than we'd produce today. This means, I mean, it's a very abstract concept, what does 6x mean? It means that 336 new mines predicted currently in development will all together need to come online and start producing to supply the materials needed, lithium, copper, cobalt, and so on. Recycling rates itself are low. Um, yes, the segment in supply is exponentially growing, but will not substitute primary mining in the short term. Just ask yourself, how many smartphones do you have unused in your own drawer at home? We are on the verge of a decade-long super cycle, and despite some recent setbacks that we had this year and some disruptions, the fundamentals have never been stronger. Yet our industry suffers from a variety of challenges ahead of us. Depleting resources, deteriorating grades, uh, the mines existing will eventually come to a halt. Going concern does not exist in our industry. The capital markets are failing junior miners to provide sufficient capital to take entrepreneurial risk and go to untapped territories and make the discoveries needed. And the increased focus from investors towards ESG standards leads to funds being not diverted towards the mines that need to be developed that are in countries such as the Democratic Republic of Congo. Unless investors face the fact that the materials needed will not come from G7 countries, the important mines that need to be developed will be continue to be disregarded and not go online, which puts all of our plans and great missions at risk. We face logistical bottlenecks that are exacerbated by geopolitical tensions. And we spoke about this a lot today. And our industry struggles to attract young talent against the competition of shiny tech companies 
space discovery or the financial sector. I personally cannot think of any more industry that is more purpose-driven in making an impact on the world. And um, I think we need to improve here a lot. Our industry is not very good in adapting new technologies and innovating quickly enough. We are behind the curve and notoriously risk averse. And last but not least, we can still learn a lot about marketing ourselves. Most people do not realize that in most of the operations, we are the only employer. We take responsibility for the people in our countries, in the host communities. We are the ones that build the roads, the electricity, the water supply, the schools, the hospitals, and very often also the stadiums. So let's make mining sexy again. The global battery transition is the largest purchase order in history, probably only comparable with the uh, Industrial Revolution some 200, 300 years ago. Trillions of dollars will have to be invested in making our plans happen. Yet we face, especially in critical minerals, that resource nationalism increases. Parallel value chains are being built in several countries with several nations to capture value locally. The value creation itself is very unevenly distributed among the value chain. Take your example of a typical smartphone which costs you $1,000. The materials used in that is typically around $150 to $200. $2 of this is the price of cobalt. The Democratic Republic of Congo accounts for 70% of the production and holds about half of the reserves globally. That gives you an understanding of how, where the value is allocated. The global battery transition gives us the opportunity in creating a more balanced and fair distribution of value between the developed and the developing countries. And with the increase of demand and the fast need for ramping up production, ESG-related risks increase at the same rate. Where states and national policy makers find its natural boundaries, global market participants need to take responsibility. Responsibility to protect our environment, responsibility to enforce human rights, responsibility for the host communities that we operate in. In short, transparent and responsible sourcing cradle to grave. And this means leveling the playing field by agreeing with all market participants with binding rules of engagement for responsible sourcing. This is a commitment that end customers demand from us, and they are more than right in doing so. Thank you, Thank you so much, Jonathan. That's, that's very important that you remind on, on, uh, on this. And uh, well, I think it was a great overview.